Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by everyone and everything around you, then do we have the <laughs> kindness and compassion, <laughs> love, peace, and harmony show for you. <laughs> Today, we'll talk about cranking up the self-love and the love for others, even at 140 decibels. That plus we'll talk about pookie vacations, new show learnings, a coming night of cleanup, and what in the world hugging a roo has to do with anything. <laughs> so welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's an honor of, of roo. How's sweet roo doing right now? He's taking a nap. Today is his biggest nap day in a a very long time. Um, It's also been his quietest day in quite a long time. So it this is this is a good thing. He's been getting up earlier and earlier, I think, because Jessica has been on vacation this week. And so his preferred wake up time is around 356 to 357. Specifically, he looks at his rooster watch. And 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 it used to be that he waits until I wake up. No, no. (laughs) Rooster watch says, hey, it's almost four. It's time to get up. Well, <laughs> it's time to get what up. does this have to do with Jessica being there or not? Well, because he has separation anxiety. Oh. And so he's missed her tremendously this week. And oh. and he's continuously in the sense either literally or in his heart looking all around for her. And each day this week oh. up through uh, today, today we we got over that hump. Um, he's been getting louder and louder as he's more and more concerned. Where's his hen? And uh, <laughs> today actually was a better day. But my my ear roosters are literally a 140 decibel animal. They're about 20 decibels more than a jet airplane. Wow. And so my ears are going to take a few days for the inflammation <laughs> to calm down. But this morning I was just bear hugging him every Aww. chance I could, and it was his his quietest, most soothing day as I'm like, all right, and, and and I've been doing well, how much love can I bring? And and I mean, it it's easy. That sound is piercing. It'd be easy to go the other direction, but let's just see how much I can be a love machine and therefore how much he can be a love machine because he understands. So, and, and he's understanding more and more. So how much can I just treat him? See, like we've got one of the kitties in the background going, where's mommy too? I was going <laughs> to say, is that Lumi? Who's a, yeah, so you. That's, that's Lumi. So we've got Lumi who wants to be spoon fed food. Um, we have Sir Meowsers who, who lost his stuff during the last interview and started beating on bags for food. He had only been fed five minutes before the interview, mind you. <laughs> Love Bug seems to be pretty good about all of this. She's rolling with it. Wow. And so it has just been, it is such an exercise for all of us. Can you take it when things really seem to fin- feel like they're spinning out of control or just overwhelming? Can we actually ascribe new meaning to it and turn it on its head? So can we say, all right, you could call this a zoo-like situation. It's a very calm like zoo, mind you. <laughs> but can I give it another meaning? Can this be a week of love, peace, and harmony? Can this be a week with total kindness and compassion for the animals, kindness and compassion for myself as well? Yeah. And or or like even, I think it's even okay to feel like lonely. You know what I mean? Like the animals are like, we're lonely. (laughs) Where's mommy? (laughs) And I think, uh, I actually think during the COVID days that it's very natural to feel lonely, you know, to, or, you know, we already, I don't know. I'm not someone who generally feels lonely. And I feel like in COVID there is kind of that loneliness factor that's happening. It's interesting you say that. So Jessica went to um, a, a resort on uh, right on the, what do you call it? The bay in the bay in San Diego, where she could do all these water sports, sail and, paddleboard nice. and all these things and her favorite activity speaking of loneliness of the whole bunch was hanging out with three ducks 
She said she felt like the Pied Piper. They followed her around everywhere. First day was communing with a great, great crane who let her get within five feet of it. This is a giant, magnificent wow. animal. It's something like an eight-foot wingspan. Wow. And it stood within five feet of her. She's like, you see the picture I sent you? She's like, no. And, and you could see all, you know, all the little hairs of plumage. She's like, that wasn't zoomed in. Wow, very cool. So her her vacation was about connecting with others, in this case, connecting with the animals, which is is our MO. And it seems like she's like, you know, we've been caring for Rue so much. The birds are treating me a little differently. Wow. <laughs> she's like Dr. Doolittle down there. Wow, that's very cool. And so she's gone for, when's she coming back? 35, 37 minutes. Somewhere in this <laughs> oh, room. you must be so excited. The animals, I, you know how dogs know when their owners are coming back? Do you think that the animals know? Do you think that's why Lumi's like, Meow. Could be that's what's going on. So what, what uh, uh, her na- nickname is Pookie or Pookstar. My nickname is the Hooby. And mm-hmm. so what the Hooby is, is most concerned about is the place doesn't look like, in our words, disaster. But it doesn't look as good as it could, but I have really done the best I could. So after this, if she doesn't show up for a minute or two, I'm grabbing the broom again. I'm grabbing the dustpan. But it seems like you you put down a a whole night of cleanup. So you've already cleaned up for all last night? No, all tonight I will be. Oh. (laughs) Yeah, the timing is a little bit off, CJ, but but I do have the laundry going, the dishes going, uh, every dish, every thing that could possibly be laundered is, is done. I have done as well as I could. I made it and with the house fairly immaculate until I think it was at some point Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> and I waved the white flag and full on fatigue set in that, that doing all of this is a one man show. <laughs> It's usually Jessica that goes out for vacation. I don't think I've only hear, heard you once go when you went to Florida to that big event where it was like um, the Nobel Nobel laureate event. Yeah, that was down in, in actually Merida, Mexico last year. That oh, was excuse me, Mexico. Yeah. That, so that, she, that, but you've actually had to um, learn how to refine your skills in like animal care. But this is the first time with Rue, right? So and and I was. I didn't want to give her any guilt, but I told her beforehand, you have my blessings to go on vacation. Boy, is this going to be hard, but you do have my blessings. And I'm like, this is not a complaint. This is factual, yeah. but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. And I said, all right, maybe I should put different language behind it because words yeah. are so meaningful. This is going to be so uplifting. This is going to be so great. This is going to be so powerful. Go, go, go. And she made it just after the book launch and she then crashed and burned and she told me, this week on like a Skype call that she'd been planning it all along, that she would be coming in on fumes till the book launch and then need a vacation after it. And so um, this was great for her. This yeah. was on some level great for us. And, and all of these things are going through portals and tunnels. They're great shifts that come out of them. I can't even imagine what it will look like yet. So the only only thing I wish is that I have no idea yet how to do two things. One, travel distance with Ruru. Like, how do I take a plane flight? How do I go to another country? No idea. And I have no idea how I would find a sitter for him. No idea. You couldn't necessarily all. just bring him to a farm, a chicken farm, and have them tend to. No. Because would they get into fights or what happens? That would be like taking a special needs child and dropping him off in a cage someplace. Oh, I see. Yeah, so he's actually had certain, he's like, he's a domesticated animal now. Completely and totally. We did take him to visit a rescue center earlier this year so we could learn about it. And he freaked out. And it was, he was like, are you leaving me here? Because first the, the owner there picked him up saying, oh, I, I pick up roosters all the time. And he's like, mommy, daddy, what are you doing? So I, I, I gave him a minute that scooped him back up. And and then he was so freaked out. He had to go in the car and just calm down. It was. Oh, wow. He is to him life with humans walking around as as a fellow two legger just with wings is his way of existence. He knows at this point of wow. nothing else. I just can't imagine what your poor animals are going to do when you actually, if you can't take 
we were on a flight. What are they going to do when you take your flight, next flight or long distance journey? My Yikes. my only guess so far, and, and and we're really good at manifestation. And so my my I I've already been envisioning the perfect animal trainer, and a literal animal trainer to come stay if we can't travel with him. And I'm envisioning envisioning travel with him. I don't know what that looks like yet. Uh, <laughs> you could probably go to. I've been to India with chickens traveling. Um, I don't, I think I've been to Nepal with chickens on, on buses. On yeah, traveling on the planes and on the buses, but uh, not here in the U.S. I don't know how you're going to get from the U.S. there, but once you're there, you can probably travel around and be cool. The best I can come up with is, is that um, we're going to need to charter jets at some point, as crazy as that sounds, to take our whole troop with us wherever we're okay going. that's crazy <laughs> there are there are, are more eco solutions as far as you charter with other families and stuff but something will i have no idea and and i would love to i was definitely she was showing me pictures of her sailing and oh. and i grew up sailing i sailed since i was probably five years of age or something i could sail on my own by maybe seven and, and all of these things, and I'm like, oh, I'd love that. Mm. We'll figure it all out. Kindness, love, compassion, and just a patience that we are all in this together, which means during this COVID time, there is nobody, nobody who I've met yet who's saying, I'm doing everything I want right now. Right. I can think of maybe one exception, a Hollywood producer who's who's just sold his home and he's moving into the RV to do his RV journey with his kids for six years. He's like, I'm wow, rich. I got the time or six months, not six years. Not, not that. I was going to be like, like, that's a long time. <laughs> he's like, I'm rich. I got the time right now. <laughs> and he's homeschooling anyway. So why yeah, the heck not? Exactly. So wow. But we might be in the RV doing that thing again later this year. Who knows? Wow. But we're well, all in this together, all saying, this isn't what I signed up for, but apparently it is. <laughs> You know, I, I, I was thinking about you because um, well, I interviewed a guest and he was talking about um, research he did on psychotherapy, specifically how psychotherapy is about memory and like after you actually have a big memory kind of aha or like some, some kind of um, reframing of a huge memory during a psychotherapeutic session, they're now researching and finding that it's really good for that memory to get reconsolidated and recombined or whatever that you need to take rest. And so actually the ideal scenario is to have a psychotherapeutic session, take a nap. Um, and so I have um, heeded that advice, which I have never done. I've never had like a big opening of which I have a lot of big openings. I haven't had an opening and then rested or had a big opening or took a nap and I've been doing that and it's a huge game changer. And I actually had um, a minor surgery um, um, and uh, on yesterday and it really hurt. Like I was driving on the highway thinking, I really probably should not be driving on the highway because I'm in excruciating pain and I have a really high pain threshold. And I thought, I, thank goodness this is a short drive. So it was like a five minute drive, but still like, Probably shouldn't have been on the highway. Anyways, got home and I was like, <laughs> I said to my husband, I'm in so much pain. And I just dropped on all fours and was crawling on the ground because it was just so, I'm like, I can't believe how painful this is. And I thought, okay, I, I just need to take a nap because maybe if I take a nap, it will help this procedure integrate and allow me to like, my body to integrate and heal faster. So I just thought I, I would normally not be taking a nap at four in the afternoon, but I did and it I woke up and I still have like some cramping, but not, I mean, I was, it was so bad. I was literally crawling, <laughs> it was just so bad. But I think about you, the whole kind, gentle, easy, good yeah. and how incredibly important it is to take that time to rest, especially after you've had like a big push. And I, and I feel like you're pretty good. Are, do you feel like you're pretty good at doing that? 
pretty good. I could use, so I will definitely take more couch time and and more bed time this coming weekend. <laughs> this yeah. has been a, a big week. But I've been really gentle where, um, like, just about every day I get out for a workout, and I have fun with my workouts. Yeah. And today I knew I was coming in on fumes. I'm like, no, it's okay. Chill. <laughs> it's so okay. It's all right. It's all right. And literally talk to myself that yeah. way. Yeah. And and talk to that inner child. And I'm like, whatever you need, whatever you want, it's all okay. I've got you covered. Yeah. I was doing the same. I had like a hot water compress on my stomach and I was like, mm-hmm. it's all right. It's it's actually okay. I had to I had to actually have a the inside of my uterine lining scrape to make sure that it's good and healthy, but it was super painful, and I I had no idea how painful it was going to be. Even though the the doctor before she was doing was kind of like now, and, and you know you kind of she talks it up. I'm like yeah yeah I'll be fine, and then I was like oh my gosh. So so anyhow, um, yeah the whole. Um, the whole idea of just actually taking care of yourself during really busy times. And um, speaking of which, I I was kind of getting bummed out because it's been, it's in Seattle, it rains every day. I mean, it's not a joke. Like, it is gray Can or you raining. Send, well, let's do a little trade here of some sort. <laughs> Why don't you come here, Michael? Because, like, it is just so rainy and um and actually, this this week has turned it around because it snowed, and so there was like just that little change made a huge difference. I was like in heaven when it snowed. Just that little bit of a change. In fact, we had made um, plans to go to like some place with snow, but then it like dumped down twelve inches. So we're like, okay, I think I'm good with the snow. And then a girlfriend of mine, I just thought. I'm I'm really um in our last show we were talking about like just being in synchronicity and the flow with everything and so I'm like calling people they're like I was just thinking about you I'm like I know I guess somehow I knew but I talked to my friend and she said oh I'm here I'm like where are you she's like I'm in Hawaii I'm like what and she said yeah I have to do some um, repair work on my condo in Hawaii you should come and I thought. I am going to come. And I said, are you joking or are you serious? Because <laughs> I will come if that is a true invitation. I have Expedia on speed <laughs> Exactly. So, since, so that was on Monday. So since then, um, I, you know, I, I booked my tickets, got a pretty good rate to Hawaii. And um, so I'm going to go on my little final. This is the first time I've ever been on a plane during since March since COVID time. So I'm taking my own little mini vacation and going to Hawaii that has all these different kinds of regulations before you go. So I just have my swab my nose for 15 seconds on one side and then the other. And hopefully I'll find out today whether I'm COVID free and able to get on the plane. We, so. we may send Jessica in a few weeks. She's coming to back, Hawaii. of course, shortly. Not to Hawaii, but we may actually send her to uh, Mexico or Costa Rica or, or someplace. I, I know it's it's still COVID and we're doing our best to be as safe as possible. But that girl needs even more rest and more of a change of scenery. That's what you need right now is a change of scenery. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just... I think the whole COVID just being stuck in one, like we would literally um, go for like a mini vacation by driving across the bridge, which is a half an hour away, but we wouldn't go though normally. Like we don't really leave like a three mile radius from our house because we're either walking there, or maybe grabbing a meal if a restaurant is open out in the freezing cold with some heat lamps and like little plastic flaps flapping around but that's basically it's been dire so i think um in terms of overwhelmed by everyone and everything around you it's more like needing to like a change of change of scenery um so i am so so excited to go to hawaii just even Ooh. i don't even know whatever happens is fine i just want oh. sun <laughs> Mother Maui will take care of you. I know you reached out earlier this week and you said, where do I go? Because we live there. Mother Maui will provide just the right opportunities. Just go in with open heart as you do and and say, 
please guide me and she will. So oh, no, no, with that there. said, I, I, I can I can suggest special hikes and things of that sort, but she'll take care of you. Um, it's interesting. I, I was thinking about you said, what about Jessica going to Hawaii? One of the pieces I feel that's missing at this time for us is we all have believe, well, it's innate. It's born into us, have a desire to explore, to see new things and for that to light us up. And so I think that's part of her innate desire at this time. Although it's interesting, she got to San Diego and she was like the ducks, <laughs> the birds. <laughs> I'm feeling homesick for Roo Roo. She was, she was. She was I like maybe minus his crow, but. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Wow. You know, um, I, I, um, I, uh, what I've been doing, and I actually feel like a crazy person because people are like, um, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm taking a class. It's like that same class you were taking last week. I'm like, no, it's another class. <laughs> but that has been my way to travel is to take all these different meditation. It's it's phenomenal because all these meditation teachers usually like fly to Colorado, fly to Hawaii, fly to California, and you're flying all over the place spending an incredible amount of money um, in order to go to these retreats, which are sometimes, you know, three days, maybe seven days. And so then, you know, there's hotel bills that you rack up. So they're extremely expensive to do any of these retreats. So there's usually like, I'm very judicious about choosing one or two that I do during a year because it's kind of pricey. But now, you know, it's great for teachers because they can actually make a lot more money because they don't have, and they, cause they can pull from European students, people from all over the world are coming to the retreats. And um, it has been the way that I've traveled around the world is to just by taking classes and seeing people. And the experiences, f frankly, in some ways, I think are as good or better than actually in-person retreats because you can see the faces of everyone normally in a retreat you would see their backs um, and you can see the teacher's face close up and if you're energetically sensitive you feel just as much energy as you would if you saw them face to face it's been truly phenomenal I took a TUMO retreat do you know TUMO we've talked about the yeah. the running but 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 share for everybody. Um, so Tumo is the idea that um, we have these two channels, the red and white female male um, channels that run along our body, and um, they run along our. This is based on the Eastern idea of chakras and chakras. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and then they run along your central nervous system or your shishumna, and then they join um, in the dantian, which is four inches below your belly button. And so with Tumo, you're actually, I, I, I don't know everything. I, I'll tell you as much as I know at this point. I'm two thirds through it. What you're trying to do is force the, um, not force, but you're, you're pulling in and knitting, interlocking the red and white channel so that it's um, in your dantian, that area kind of right around right around your belly button you're pulling it up and you're you're having two forces meet you're having the force from um the divine which usually is considered male energy coming down which is light and bliss and at the same time you have mother earth coming up which is um you know groundedness desire rapture you know so you you have these two things meeting at your belly button and then when these two things like kiss or are intimately inter intertwined with each other, like a yin-yang symbol, then the energy moves up your system and it starts creating these tor toroidal fields around you mm -hmm. where one's going up while the other one is simultaneously going down in this kind of scenario. And um, I've it's pranayama meets kundalini yoga and it's... and I, I've, I've been in a kundalini practice beforehand, and so I'm familiar with what, what, how it feels when I'm sitting with a teacher and they're doing transmission. In this case, it's like you're doing it yourself, so you're pulling the energy up, and I have, I, I don't think I've ever experienced, but on my own, like I've had teachers giving me transmission, and I experienced blissful states, but when I'm actually the generator. 
I feel like I've just gone to the Home Depot of energy. <laughs> you know, like I didn't know, like I had to call up the carpenter before to like help me do stuff. And now it's like, I found like the Home Depot do it yourself model. And it the is automatic incredible. writing of Kundalini. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, that's phenomenal that you could do that by yourself for yourself as a result of probably all the help that I've received cumulatively from my wonderful teachers. I don't think it's, it's not like I could have like, I just did this on my own. You know, I built a bookshelf. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's because I've been building and getting help from so many wonderful teachers, but oh my gosh, it is just, uh, it's like a game changer. It's unbelievable. Uh, I'm definitely going to, I'll ask you offline. I want to find out more. This sounds phenomenal. It With is. said, Years ago, when you were doing Kundalini work, you were a mess. I was a mess. <laughs> and now you seem very grounded because that Kundalini was just blasting upwards. This is rooted in earth. Yes, so and that's the, the big two. difference. Yes, it's the it's this part. I was just having a, you know, it's just like having like a, I don't know, like Hyrule a fire technique. hydrant. Yeah, fire hydrant flying all over the place and there's still a little bit of wobbling that's happening um way less extreme than it used to but you know you know i'm no different than everyone else i mean most people's energy is going out all over the place like it's not centered it's not centered in our power right it's like wondering what other people are doing as an extrovert wa liking wanting that person to be friends with me it's like going outward it's not going inward so the whole idea of going inward and in the center is what this is all about so as like a wild e extrovert you know i had to <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of movement that i had to go to get to this introvert place so a crazy question is would you choose N netflix uh, uh, Amazon Premier Movies, Facebook, or doing Tumo? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have Tumo all the way. Seriously, it is just that, although I really like Netflix. Um, <laughs> but I would say there are two totally. One is kind of entertaining. The other one is like, like, going on the best adventure that you really don't even know where it's going, but you're always like pleasantly surprised. Not always, but like pleasantly surprised because like, oh, I didn't realize that was there. You know, dangerous snake in the cave. Okay. <laughs> or wow, it's like fireworks or, you know, like bright light or wow, I was just bawled my eyes out. Like, so it's kind of, I have to say, sometimes I go to some of these retreats and I'm like, this is way better than Netflix because the drama, the crying, the anguishing screams, <laughs> the confusion, the anger, it's like all there in these retreats because when you are surrounded by energy, you just cook in it and whatever is ready to pop, pops and you don't know what that thing is going to be. <laughs> I can still remember being at a, a brief retreat on Maui. Mm -hmm. And I, I forced myself to hold it together when we were doing some sort of group chanting work. Yeah. And I started convulsing and and it 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 was so unexpected. It was so much earlier in my journey that I thought, oh, this is my ego again, just trying to steal the show in front of everybody else. <gasps> and I'm trying to tamp it down and shut off the flow as I'm about to have some sort of uh, I, God only knows what kind of experience. Well, what happened? You've never told me about this, Michael. This I, is the first I managed, time. I managed to tamp it down. Um, it, How could it you might... tamp it down? What did you do? I, I willpowered something. Something was coming to come through, some sort of connection. And I don't know what that was going to be or what that was going to look like. But I was so horrifically embarrassed that I was like trying to steal center stage. It was, it was only a couple of years after I had first learned something akin to automatic writing at another retreat. Um, it was uh, learning how to write with the Akashic masters and you had to read back what you wrote. And what I read wrote was I'd be speaking before millions on a mountain on high. I'd be a leader. I'd be a teacher. I'd be and wow. I had to read that to everybody, and I was so horrifically—it's all happened—but I, 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 I was so horrifically embarrassed.
that I was still working through this. I wasn't ready to dive into automatic writing yet because I thought it was ego stealing the show. Mm. And so here I am at another retreat and Spirit is trying to crack me wide open at this retreat. And I'm like, not again, damn it. This is your ego again, trying to say, look at me, everybody, look at me. <laughs> and and I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like doing everything I can <laughs> to bring it back under control. And, and that piece actually has never popped through. It'd be interesting to see and yeah. such an experience. There was something important waiting, but apparently the time was not right. Well, I mean, some people believe that um, you don't want the winds, which are these like large things to take over. So when those happen, you want to like center in and center into your Dantian. So if you did that, that would have been like what a lot of teachers believe is kind of an appropriate expression. Because if you have it go all over, it, it's like um, probably I think it would have gone out. on all, all over. And yeah. So <laughs> back in. <laughs> well, someone had said something that I thought was really interesting. When you have those kind of openings. Um, if it's not moderated, right? Like if you don't, if you know, it's, it comes in an explosive way. Um, like mine typically did. I wish I had gotten this advice before all this stuff happened, but what they had said is like, this if, is like what they need to tell you about they, before exactly, you actually do it. Exactly. Like, why do you tell me beforehand? But if you have these explosive openings, it can be very dis like, um, disoriented you don't know where you are you're just like lost you know track you think you're god you've lost your name like you're like some people get really like out there because their psyche isn't strong enough so when something like this brooms through it's like a game changer it changes your world view and how you who you think you are what you think the world is it's so disorienting that if it comes on too fast and you don't have the time to integrate it or it becomes very big, it's destabilizing. It's extremely destabilizing. So it could be that exact if you kind of went and centered and brought it down, it was, you know, maybe that was exactly what you needed because you didn't need to be more destabilized or destabilized at all. Um, so like you just you just never know with these things like what or it could be that that thing just is ready to burst open in the near future <laughs> i don't when know the time is <laughs> right whatever will happen i'm not chasing it down i'm not forcing it i'll allow it all all in its time it's sort of like uh, you you can you can channel I can channel, I can't believe I can say that, I can channel. Yes, you, you, we all can, but it's a matter of tuning in. and That's what I teach in automatic writing. But I've asked before, it's been asked of me, I don't know if in an automatic writing or what. Um, well, you don't, uh, you're not somebody who can like predict the future or say, well, your grandmother, I can see your grandmother behind you, CJ, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. That's not my gig. But I believe the universe gives you exactly what you need for your path. Right. And if all of a sudden I'm seeing spirit behind all of my guests, I may be having a hard time doing my <laughs> interviews. Is that what's really happening, Michael? Yeah. Or are you just saying, hypothetically, if you start to see it? Hypothetically speaking, <laughs> I saw you turn a little ghost right there. Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> speaking. <laughs> well, you know, it's I, I was talking to a client today and like, I'm, I'm really getting to the point where my intention is to be in synchronicity and, and I'm just allowing the thing with COVID is I have been experimenting with new ways of being with clients. And cause as my energy and vibration has expanded, it's allowed me to feel things more deeply and to tune into like the greater awareness around a person. And so I'll just say stuff that I wouldn't, it seems like, I don't even know why I'm saying it. So I was talking to this one person and I was like, the way that you can think about this is your personal branding. And she's like, that's so funny. Cause I was literally just talking to someone about that the other day. You're so intuitive. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get, you know, I'm like, I'm just tuning in. And, and to me personally, it seemed like a random little thing to go off, but I just said, I haven't, I'm having this weird intuitive hit. I'll just take you there, but I don't know why I'm taking you there. Sorry if I've taken you down a dead end. Lately in my coaching sessions, I've been saying weird things. <laughs> like, like I said to somebody last week, um, I, I see a, I see a picture. Well, I, I guess I'll keep it kind of generic. I, I drew a scene out in my mind's eye and I said, mm -hmm. I don't know why I feel like sharing. 
and I was spot on. And yesterday, I feel a pain in such a certain place, and I was spot on. And and I, I think this is what you get if you go to one of those uh, uh, spirit, not spirit, spiritual, spiritualist, maybe it's that kind of schools like a, 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 a Finlay, a Arthur Finlay College in the UK or some of these other places where you learn to actually be brave enough to share what's coming up because you're going, am I making that up? Or and am so I crazy? It, like it just seems doing. weird. Yeah, it's like, I, ah, like this sounds going to sound weird, but blah, 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 you know, like coming out of your mouth. Hopefully it sounds more eloquent than that. But um, yeah, it's 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 really a cool thing, this whole, I'm, I'm playing around with it because um, one, there's so much beauty and creativity and being there. Um, and two, it feels magical, you know, when you, and, and it's, I'm not attached to it. So like, if you, you know, sometimes I hit, sometimes I don't, I don't even know. I just do do it and just see what resonates with people. And the other thing I wanted, I have a question for you and I, I wanted to share something else that was like a big aha this week, which is that, um, last week, I think I may have meant, did I mention the idea of beauty? No, have I? No. Yes. Sure. No. Okay. Um, both of us interview tons and tons of guests. And um, oftentimes I'm trying to understand their work. So I'm like, well, you do a reading for me just so I can understand. Plus it's just such a generous, wonderful thing to get a reading. Um, but oftentimes when I either do like the Michael teachings, um, uh, which is not your teachings, but like the Archangel Michael, yeah. um, like I get that, you know, my purpose in life is for beauty in this thing. Or I do a Chinese feast reading and it's like, here are all the different things, but really it's about beauty. And then um, I did, I'm taking this Jean Cleese class, which is based on the um, I Ching, and it's about beauty. And so like, I'm, I'm like, no matter where, and then I'm, I'm doing an automatic writing exercise. And um, I've been told that I should look at Alice Bailey's fourth ray. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And of course, I go investigate. It's about beauty. And so it's, it's just this theme that is like just pummeling me over the head, like boom, boom, boom. Think about this. And then on uh, Monday, I have an interview with um, um, Robert Moss. Have you ever talked to him? Oh, gosh. He was, I was trying to remember his name recently because he has, he has so many – oh, my the guy is genius. One of the most amazing uh, shaman on the planet as far as I'm concerned – He's an elder. He's uh, he's a leader. And one of the things that that I have taught ever since I I, I had I think was one it might have been two interviews with him. Thank you for mentioning him. Yes. Is the concept of putting a question out, particularly in the city, putting a question out to the universe, and stepping outside and putting together the first three things that you hear, and that is an answer from the universe. I uh, he is so. I feel like he like stepped out of the Hogwarts school. And it was totally. like, here's all the magic things. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, there are fairies and wizards and, huh, you know, like, uh, he I is, have him back on, you should, because he has a new book that has come out, but he is so wonderful. And when I was talking to them, that kind of like spark of creativity and imagination and dreams, and he's just opened up this huge new world, a beautiful world that I didn't, that I've been kind of. I realized that when I was a little girl, a little Asian girl, um, for, for in my family at least, um, it was like, okay, that's all really not like I, I have this image. I have, actually have this video of me dancing around. I have a parasol and I have a kimono on and I'm dancing. And it's just like, and I don't, there's no music, by the way. I'm dancing to like the sounds in my head and I'm like, have this whole orchestrated dance. And I was like, where the heck did that sweet little girl go? And it just got drummed out of me, like all, all feminine aspects of me, all artistry, all creativity, all singing, all dancing. It's just like, you know, nullified and no and void. It's it's fascinating, particularly this concept. And 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 and, and you go, girl, you go down that road. And I'm I'm, I'm interested to hear this. I've been, I've been teaching a lot about what's been tamped down and reconnecting with that inner child. But a lot of the metaphors I'm getting lately are in song. So we, we've written um, a paradigm in new politics about a new way of envisioning the world coming together as one and singing a song in harmony together. And I just did a teaching yesterday on sing and grow rich or sing and be rich, that to sing your song is to be in attunement 
with the universe. And that's what you were doing. Yeah. You were singing in attunement with the universe, hearing this, this I, I picture this angelic song, this angelic harp, without needing any external sound around you. Yeah, no, I, I really, if I kind of remember hearing the music, like I, and I forgot, like I, you know, you're kind of like, you're not hearing music. Oh, that's your imagination, you know? And, and yeah, probably, I don't know what it was, but um, those aspects of herself, song, dance, art, um, when you read um, Robert Moses, when you interview him, he talks about all those aspects and bringing those things back because they're your soul speaking. And so it's just so been so beautiful how all of these things have been interwoven. And the last thing, because I know you've got to go, I have a question for you. So go I, for it. I, um, and, and I'm, I'm writing down here on in my notes. Robert Moss, Robert Moss, Robert Moss. I've got it four times here with exclamation marks because it is ringing such a chord. It it's is, just a beautiful it book. Perfect. So, um, and the last thing I, I this morning I was um, interviewing Eben, Alex, Eben Alexander, who I know you're great friends with. I was just with. thinking about him. In fact, I, I mentioned him in a class in the last week again. Wild, yes. He has Super a new book coming out. Another new book. Excellent. Okay, so Eben Alexander, Karen Newell. Put that in your in your <laughs> your notes. And I've got them both on together. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> on on actually on attunement and frequency and music is what I had them on together about. So there is a chord being present here. <laughs> well, I, I will real. just continue. I mean, frequency harmony is all real. I know. I'm telling you, my life has just been like a continuous song the whole week. Ever since I've been like, I want to, I'm going to intentionally go into creativity and synchronicity. And it's just been happening. Um, as it is just with the show. I mean, I just think it's great. So anyways, what I asked, like, how did you guys meet? And um, uh, Karen said that they had met at a workshop. It was like a sound healing kind of workshop. And they were Where's paired it? together. And um, she said, well, how are you feeling when they met together? And he said, I feel like the yin and the yang of the heart have been joined in one. And I was like, oh, best pickup line ever. <laughs> but he also said. But isn't, isn't that what you were just saying with the Tubo experience? Exactly. I mean, that, I mean, this whole thing has just been like so crazy synchronistic. I mean, the whole interview, I was like, it, it was just so many things kind of like just running in parallel. Um, You're my yank. To my yes. Yank. <laughs> yes. In my heart. And, and um she, she asked him, she said, I just have one question. This is before he wrote his, his book that is a New York Times bestseller, blah, blah, blah. So before he became famous. And, he, and she said, well, what, you know, what brings you here to this workshop? And I may be butchering this, like, I think it's like 90% correct. And he said, um, because I want to, um, I experience this incredible power of unconditional love in my near-death experience. And I wanted to see if I could experience that again, but I convinced myself it was way too powerful um, that I could not experience that at the human level. And then I thought, note to self, ask Michael about this. Did you feel, because I know that your love for Jessica is what brought you back one of your near-death experiences, but did you feel like the level of unconditional love when, in, when you were in your near-death experience was anything close to the experiences that you've had in various meditations or work since then? That's a brilliant question. It's an attunement is how I see it. And, and it's sort of like there are many spiritual teachers and there, there are many uh, others, not just teachers, who go on like an ayahuasca journey once or twice a year to attune themselves to that higher frequency, mm -hmm. shall we say. So... The, the bursting forth of love that I got from those experiences did kind of calm down afterwards. But I'm not convinced I couldn't experience it here on earth. My mind would go to Evan, limiting belief, but who am I to know what the level, and he went to what was called the core, as he described it, the level to where he went is so far beyond. I mean, he was brain dead for a week, so far beyond what I experienced. I experienced 
such joy and such love and such peace and such my woohoo did not exist until after my first NDE. Wow. That woohoo is to me coming from source. And so when somebody says tamp it down or I love Jessica so, so much, she's like, you scare people away when you do that too much. I'm like, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sacred mantra. And, she, and she's like, can you do it at a different tone? Ooh. <laughs> 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 <So, laughs> but um, what's the word for it? Not frequency, not tone. The um, there's a word for force in music. Um, Pitch. The amount of volume. Oh, uh -huh. But there's another word for it. Uh, is maybe different. The fire hose isn't quite as strong, mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's still there. And and that doesn't mean I can't be knocked off of it and have to come back and be knocked off of it and have to come back. And and ego will have a field day with you um, as as you go. Oh, so you think that you know how to be in a place of perfect love? Then let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So you feel like, yes, you could achieve it and you've retained a lot of what you had from that near-death experience onward. Yeah. The biggest challenges for me happen when I start to go into that fear state and forget it, mm. in which case either I bring myself back or universe is all too happy to you know, give a minor little two by four question <laughs> to me. So I'm listening, mm. but the attunement is there. Now it's interesting because you have people like um, Carl Jung, an amazing psychologist, not just in his time, but of, of ever in the history of psychology. He had an NDE and as he writes about uh. it afterwards is for the rest of his life, he wanted to get back to that experience and for a long time was bitter with God, was like at the point of profanity of saying, why the fleepity fleep am I have to be here now instead of with that amazing love? Mm. And so we can go anywhere from that experience because it is so strong, so powerful. Um, and yeah, I, I, the, the, well, no. <laughs> and part of me is going, yeah, I'd like an attunement. And then <laughs> the other response is, no, no, I'm good. I'm really good. <laughs> That's hilarious. Get it. I totally get it. You're like, One I year. don't feel like dying again. Just FYI, if you heard no. that and translated that to like have me die again, that's not what I meant. February 2nd, or excuse me, April 2nd, 2006. And then I think it was July 19th, uh, 2013, seven years one month, 17 days apart, and then one year later, a non-NDE, but what cracked all the bones around my heart, mm. uh, up down, Oh my God, first, Michael. And, and, and cracked me finally fully open, which was the letting go of the egoic part of a, well, you get to blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, surrender. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Can Evan get back there? I'm sure he can. He probably has through music at this point, is my guess. Can we stay in that bliss? That's the question because there is a certain amount of, well, this goes back to Tumo. There's a certain amount of connection to earth you need in order to navigate the earthly plane. That's why I see so many people, spiritual people gone wild, who are like completely unscrewed and unglued because they're just working on the Kundalini experience mm -hmm. without the grounding into, and the rooting into earth. Mm -hmm. If you get into such a, I am loved by all, I am bliss, I am one. The first time you go to cross the street, you really will be one, but it won't be <laughs> one here on earth. <laughs> Well, I, I, it's funny because I was just um, taking a class with John Burney and to th this this morning, and he was saying that you know really enlightenment is so that you can fully embrace your humanity. I mean, it's not just for like blissful experiences; it's so that 
you know, that I don't know what if, what it's supposed to be for. I mean, maybe for just your joy, maybe to take as you're doing, as both of us are doing, which is to take the states of higher vibration frequency and giving it all back, you know, because that's mm -hmm. how we're all, we all want to cross the finish line. So, you know, it's basically like a bodhisattva going and, and helping other people who are suffering to, to pivot to a different place. And so I, that's at least one person's perspective on what enlightenment is about. It's not necessarily to make you just be blissed out with little jewel spickles out of your mouth, which I have done, <laughs> passed out on the ground. <laughs> it's not all that it's cut out, you know, they cut out to make it be. It's not that great. Um, <laughs> but anyways, right. yeah, I just wanted to ask you that because I thought, I wonder what Michael's going to say. It's, it, I'm, and thank you for asking. I, I think my journey, and Jessica will be home in just a minute or two here. I think my journey now, as much as I want to give this all away with everyone out there, is, as I said the day that she left, is um, the house is not a home without the pookie. Mm, yeah. Is how much can I up my game for her rather than just my game for everyone else. And I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy, mind you. Yeah. But, but that's my challenge for me is how can I take that into family even more? Well, I was going to say, well, when the kids, um, when you're an empty nester, which has a totally different meaning for you. 20 years with a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that, you know, you have this kind of like, where am I? And then for Gideon and myself, we've just become closer. Like we both have leaned in and tightened, you know, the, the relationship. And so it can go both directions. I mean, it just depends on what you choose to do, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Man, this has been such a special show. I hope everybody's enjoyed this journey <laughs> we've gone on today. To, to use a vernacular that I don't usually use, this has been juicy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'm going to put that in the title. Juicy winding around. <laughs> it has been juicy. Well, you know what? It's probably because I probably, you're in like desperate desire state to see your beautiful wife. And oh, I have okay. just been I'll, sitting I'll and like, <laughs> your animals, I, I, oh, your animals are in desire state to see your are. wife. I'm, I'm in desire state to have a minute or two to sweep. <laughs> okay. I'll let you go. <laughs> How much love can I bring her? Although I wouldn't be half surprised if she is actually right outside the door, not wanting to interrupt the interview. Oh, no. Ay <laughs> Lots of love, CJ. Lots of yes. love, everybody. Kind, gentle, easy, good. How much kindness and compassion can you bring to yourself right now? I'm like, I'm petting my earthing mat on the table here. <laughs> How much, and I literally have my earthing mat here on the table. How much love can you bring to yourself during this time? Yes. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Be well, have fun, go to kindness, love, self love, compassion, go to the works, big hug to yourself, big hug to your inner child, and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Woo -hoo.